I have had many people send me questions and ask my opinion about flight paths and emergency landings, how these flight paths prove that the shape of the Earth is not a globe. I have since decided to make this video where I will present 5 emergency landings proving flat Earth, and I will show by comparing the flight paths side by side on the globe model and on the flat Earth map that the paths of these flights on the flat Earth map make more sense over a ball earth model. I will also present evidences of a flat stationary earth through the wind and ocean currents with the sun and the moon and the seasons. The flat earth map I will be using in this video is the one which has come to be known as the Gleason's map, the new standard map of the world by Alex Gleason. There isn't a map that's 100% accurate. And the Gleason's map may or may not have its flaws, but for comparing flight paths, wind and ocean currents, the sun and the moon, the seasons, it's a perfect tool. At the end of this video, you will find a link where you can download and print a free high resolution flat earth map. I hope you enjoyed the vi this video and where I will be comparing side by side globe and flat earth and I will demonstrate once and for all that our earth is flat and stationary. There is no movement at all and there has never been recorded in history any spin of the earth. The first parts of this video we will be talking about flight paths and emergency landings. Flights number one and two, I have already made videos about them. In this video, we will talk about flights number three, four and five. I have never talked about these three flights before, although you can find them in my book. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and find, find out more information about our flat and stationary Earth. Flight LH 543 with 191 passengers on board. And a crew of 13 members departed Bogota on July 26, 2017, towards Frankfurt, Germany. Among the 191 passengers, a pregnant woman, originally from Bulgaria, boarded the plane with no major problems. But something quite unusual for the crew of 13 happened during the flight over the Atlantic. Somewhere over the Atlantic, the woman gave birth to a baby boy, being assisted by the flight attendants. Reports say that the passengers had to move seats and the back of the plane was converted into a delivery room. The captain also decided to make an emergency landing for the well-being of the child. What doesn't make sense is the city where the plane landed. Lufthansa flights LH 543 made an emergency landing in Manchester, in England. According to the flight path, Lufthansa LH 543 flies just north of Portugal and Spain. It flies just south of Paris, south of Brussels and above Luxembourg before reaching Frankfurt. Even if the plane had to fly a little bit north of its flight path on the globe, stopover in London could be somewhat acceptable. But the plane landed in Manchester, 200 miles north of London. This makes absolutely no sense at all on the Globe Earth model. Manchester is located 700 miles northwest of Frankfurt. The flight is coming from South America, just north of the equator. There is no explanation on Globe Earth why Lufthansa LH 543 was flying 700 miles northwest of its destination, 200 miles north of the city of London. When looking at the flight path on the flat earth map, everything becomes clear. Everything makes sense. When comparing Lufthansa LH 543 flight path on the globe earth model and on the flat earth, you can see for yourself how everything makes more sense 
on the Gleason's Flat Earth Map. Qatar Airways flight QR725 made an emergency land in Moscow in April of 2016. A teenager from Saudi Arabia fell in coma aboard Qatar Airways flight QR725, which departed from Chicago towards Doha, Qatar. The online news website Express UK reported that a teenager from Saudi Arabia on board flight QR725 had toxic shock syndrome and hyperthermia. After the teenager fell into a coma, the captain decided to make an emergency landing. Where the plane landed is where the argument Flat Earth vs. Globe Earth started. The plane landed in Moscow. It doesn't really make any sense at all. However, when plotted on the Flat Earth map, this flight makes perfect sense as the Flat Earth map shows that Moscow is located directly between Chicago and Doha. Look at the playback video from the site um, Flight Radar 24. We see QR 725 flying from Chicago to Doha. We can track the flight path. The airplane was flying directly over Slovakia. There were many options for the pilots, stopping in Austria, Germany, or France, and Italy. But instead, the pilot decides to stop in Moscow which is located 1,600 kilometers, as we show here on the globe and we calculate here on Google. This, is, this equals to 1,000 miles away from where the plane was flying. Now, remember, this is an emergency landing. The boy had been to a coma. Why would the pilot fly another thousand miles or 1,600 kilometers to stop in Moscow. It makes no sense on the globe Earth. But when we look at the flat Earth map, we understand why the pilot stopped in Moscow for this emergency landing. Because he was flying directly above Moscow when you fly from Chicago to Doha. On January 24th, 2019, everything seems to be okay for Hawaiian Airlines AJ-50, which departed from Honolulu at 4.13 p.m. local time, with predicted landing at JFK at 6.55 Eastern Standard Time. The duration of this flight is 9 hours and 35 minutes. The aircraft type is an Airbus A330. The aircraft was carrying 253 passengers and had 12 crew members on board. Veteran crew member Emil, Emil Griffith doesn't feel well during the flight. Griffith had been working for Hawaiian Airlines for over 30 years and he is loved and respected by his colleagues. After being flying for almost three hours, Griffith doesn't feel better and the captain decides to make an emergency landing at San Francisco International Airport at around 11 p.m. local time. Although crew members and medical personnel worked hard to save Griffith's life, he dies of a heart attack. He was 60 years old. For the purpose of our research, let's focus on the path of this flight. Hawaii stands at 19 degrees north, 155 degrees west, while New York stands at 40 degrees north, latitude north, 74 west. San Francisco stands at 37 latitude north, 122 longitude west. It's a pretty steep climb to go from 19th degrees north, 155 west, to 37 degrees north, 122 west, which is where San Francisco is located, and then remain for almost five hours 
in the same latitude until we reach New York at 40 degrees north, 74 west. Something is not quite right here. Why would a flight that's coming from the southwest not fly towards San Diego or Los Angeles but fly northwest towards San Francisco and then fly to New York at basically the same latitude? Flat Earth map not only explains why this plane landed in San Francisco, but also gives a better explanation why this plane keeps on flying at the same latitude line for five hours and uh, it makes more sense on the flat Earth map. We have just seen the strange emergency landing of a flight coming from Hawaii and landing in San Francisco. We can interpret this as being an isolated case due to a death in mid-air, and considering it was one of the crew members, they may have been advised to head to San Francisco by Hawaiian Airlines. But what to say about flight which departed from San Diego in Southern California towards Hawaii but flies to Oakland, California? for an emergency landing. This is exactly what happened on October 23, 2018, when Hawaii Airlines flight AJ-37 mount towards Hawaii, Maui, had an issue mid-air when a cockpit light illuminated shortly after takeoff, indicating a possible issue with one of the two engines of the Airbus 321N. According to MercuryNews.com, the plane departed San Diego at 8.25 a.m. and landed in Oakland, California at 10.51 a.m. Still according to the website MercuryNews.com, the airport only received initial reports that the plane would have to divert at 9.30 a.m. That means the plane was already one hour into the flight towards Hawaii, heading southwest over the Pacific Ocean, when it notified Oakland Airport. The airplane landed in Oakland one hour and 21 minutes after notifying Oakland Airport. How could a plane that was one hour into a 5 hours and 50 minutes long flight towards the opposite direction of Auckland, California, be able to go back towards the northwest and land the plane in just one hour and 21 minutes after notifying Oakland Airport? A direct flight from San Diego to Oakland takes one hour and 30 minutes if the flight departs San Diego and fly directly to Oakland. How can a flight that was already one hour long towards the opposite direction, and in Oakland in just one hour and 21 minutes after notifying the airport? This emergency landing does not really make any sense at all when you look at the globe model. Clearly, San Diego would have been the best option for an emergency landing if the plane was already one hour away over the Pacific Ocean towards Hawaii. But what if Hawaiian Airlines flight AJ-37 wasn't flying in that direction? What if Hawaiian Airlines flight AJ-37 was already flying towards the northwest? Well, it couldn't be, could it? Isn't Hawaii located southwest of San Diego? Everything starts to make sense when we look at the Cleason's Flat Earth map and compare with the globe model. As we compare the path of Hawaiian Airlines flight AJ-37 on both the globe model and on the Gleason's Flat Earth map, it becomes clear why this plane landed in Oakland, California. The flight was already one hour into the flight heading northwest on the coast of California. The pilot notified Oakland Airport, turned the plane to that direction headed towards Oakland. As we have seen with Hawaii Airlines flight AJ-50, with an emergency land in San Francisco, and with this flight, Hawaiian Airlines Flight AJ-37 landing in Oklahoma in Oakland, which is just 31 miles apart from each other. These two flights were, were heading to and coming from the same path as demonstrated on the Gleason's Flat Earth map. The Earth is flat and flight paths and emergency landings prove this fact. A 
According to Flight Radar 24, Hawaii Airlines Flight AJ-51 was flying south of Salt Lake City over Utah when it abruptly changed its path towards the northwest to make an emergency landing in Seattle. The flight was being tracked live and the flight path being presented here is in accord with the Globe Earth model and Google Maps. All of a sudden, the plane made a 90 degrees turn to its right and headed towards Seattle for an emergency landing. How could that even be possible? As with Hawaii Airlines Flight AJ-50 make an emergency landing in the northwest region of the United States, San Francisco, and Hawaii Airlines Flight AJ-37 also make an emergency landing in Oakland, California, 31 miles northeast of San Francisco, in the northwest region of the United States, I was not surprised in learning this plane made an emergency landing in Seattle. Most likely, this airplane wasn't even the place where the tracking software was showing it to be. Not much can be found about this flight or why it went from south of Utah to Seattle for an emergency landing. Nevertheless, we still have to compare the path of this flight as shown the screenshot with the Gleason's Flat Earth map and see what conclusion we get. As compared here, the flight path of Hawaiian Airlines Flight AJ-51 on the Gleason's Flat Earth map is a straight line from New York JFK to Honolulu, Hawaii, having Seattle exactly along its path. We conclude that this emergency landing in Seattle makes more sense when we look at the Flat Earth map and makes no sense at all when it's looked at on the Globe Earth model. The path of this flight on the screenshot showing the plane making an abrupt right turn and heading northwest towards Seattle leaves a tray of questions. Why didn't this plane land in Salt Lake City since it was flying south of Utah? How about Las Vegas? Why didn't this flight keep going until we reach Los Angeles or San Diego? What's wrong with Los Angeles that these flights coming from the southwest always land in the northwest region of the United States? Same thing happens when these flights go from New York towards Hawaii. Just a reminder to, to you that according to the screenshot, Hawaii Airlines Flight AJ-51 was flying at least 200 miles south of Salt Lake City. When we compare all these three flights, AJ-50, AJ-37, AJ-A-51, this is the conclusion we get. All three emergency lanes discovered in this video favor the Gleason's Flat Earth map over the Globe Earth spinning ball model. All three emergency lanes took place on the path of the flights as demonstrated on the Gleason's Flat Earth map. All three emergency lanes show to be evident that all these flights fly over the northwest region of the United States, and these three emergency lanes were no three consecutive coincidences. All three emergency landings demonstrated that what is being shown in flight tracking websites, seatback screen of airplanes, and flight tracking applications is a simulation of a global Earth, another reality of a flat, non-rotating Earth. All three emergency landings demonstrated that what we have known for quite some time, that official agencies hide the true shape of the Earth. Comparing all three flights on the Gleason's Flat Earth map, we arrive at the conclusion that these three flights prove when flying straight and directly to or from Hawaii to or from the northeast of the United States, they all fly above the northwest region of the United States and emergency landing in cities along the way like Seattle, Oakland and San Francisco make more sense when we look at the flat earth map. There are no coincidences here, the earth is flat and stationary and we've been all lied to.
Not many people know that there are jet streams circling around the Earth with speeds that reach up to 250 miles per hour or 400 kilometers per hour. There are polar jet streams and subtropical jet streams. Pilots know about them and they fly on these jet streams. They add to the speed of the aircraft without causing any damage to the fuselage. In fact, these jet streams are very similar to those moving walkways found in airports, malls, and even some cities all around the earth. Here we have a lady on a moving walkway. If someone steps on it and just stands on it, the person will move forward at the regular speed of any person walking. But if the person decides to step on and walk forward on it, the person will increase his or her speed exponentially without making any extra effort. Now that you have a picture in mind, imagine that these jet streams as being conveyor belts or moving walkways above from 7 to 50 miles up circ circulating all over the flat earth. There are maps and software available to pilots where they can locate jet streams and fly on them. This animation shows some jet streams represented by the green and red arrows going both directions, flowing all around the flat earth. So with a 260 mile per hour westerly in the jet stream, you had a tailwind that was pushing the airplane at a ground speed, and this is a record, as I understand it, of 865 miles per hour. People in the plane wouldn't have known any different, but from New York to London, that particular KLM flight only took four hours and 56 minutes. With a speed of around 400 kilometers, or 250 miles an hour, the aircraft thus attained a speed approaching 1,200 kilometers or 745 miles an hour, close to that of the sound barrier. There was no danger, however, concerning air friction on the fuselage, since the plane was flying with the wind, not against it. When you compare jet streams on the globe, it makes absolutely no sense. Ocean currents, as seen in this animation, are explained better when looked at the flat earth map. The sun's electromagnetic energy moves from the Tropic of Cancer outwards towards the Tropic of Capricorn, and then back again throughout the year, pushing the water away from its path, and it makes its journey creating the two directions in water current flow. As the sun moves along its annual path, its energy pushes the currents outward and away from its path causing the two directions in water current. When compared to the globe model, we can see that on the globe model, ocean currents make no sense. The Sun and the Moon are also better explained on the flat Earth map. The Sun and the Moon are much closer, much smaller than it's thought in the heliocentric model. The Sun circles the flat Earth in a clockwise direction, spending three months around the center pole, as known as the North Pole. It moves to the equator where it circles for three months and then moves in circles over the Tropic of Capricorn for another three months before it returns to the equator. Since the equator is the midpoint between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, it circles two times a year, six months. Th that's the reason why we never experience winter time on the equator. The seasons are also better explained on the flat earth map. Midpoint between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, the sun circles around the area two times in a year, causing the temperatures to be higher in that region than around the center and, and around the edge close to the South Circle or Antarctic Circle. 
This animation, the yellow reddish colors, demonstrate where the sun circles two times in a year, while the blue parts of the map demonstrate where the sun circles only once in a year. We can certainly say that temperatures on Earth are better understood on the flat Earth map. When the sun is circling over the Tropic of Cancer, it's summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. Kids play during a hot summer day in Brooklyn, New York. When the sun moves away and circles over the equator, spring comes to Brazil, Australia and South Africa. Fall comes to the northern region. Fall comes to Central Park. When the sun is circling over the Tropic of Capricorn, it's summertime in Brazil, Australia and South Africa. It's wintertime in the center region. It's wintertime in Central Park, New York City. Time zones are also better explained on a flat earth map. As seen here, the sun goes around the flat earth in 24 hours. Each hour represents one time zone. Eclipses are better explained on a flat earth map. Consider the paths of these eclipses on both models below. It makes absolutely no sense at all the way these eclipses work in the heliocentric model by looking at the places where they were recorded. Argentina, Atlantic Ocean, Congo, Red Sea, India, South China, Hong Kong and Caroline Island. When the same places are plotted on the Gleason's flat earth map, it makes perfect sense. The sun and the moon circle over the flat earth, the sun circles over the flat earth and eclipses prove this observation. The extensive laying out of cables on the sea bed for communication purpose not only is explained better on the flat earth map, but also reinforces the notion that satellites are a hoax. If there were the amount of satellites it's said to exist orbiting the supposed globe earth, it wouldn't be necessary to lay out cables, which are as thin as 5 inches to as thick as 15 inches or 30 centimeters. In war times, no other map is used but the flat earth map. This is the air map of the world, which is the flat earth map showing distances in miles between cities. A picture of the flat earth map was seen in Kennedy's Situation Room. This map was prepared for the Alum Aluminum Company of America in 1943, and it was recently sold in one auction for an undisclosed amount of money. Radars wouldn't work if Earth were a globe. Radar is a detection system that uses radio waves to determine the range, angle, or velocity of objects. These radio waves can't curve. This illustration demonstrates that our flight paths make absolutely no sense on a ball earth but when compared on the flat earth map they are better understood government agencies and private agents alike avoid using the flat earth map in fear that it would make too much sense 
As seen, these image flight routes are perfectly explained on a flat Earth map. Flight paths and emergency landings are among the clearest evidence that the Earth is not a globe. In Chinese culture, the yin yang symbol is nothing but a flat Earth map showing the moon illuminating the night, represented by the black half of the and the sun illuminating the day, represented by the white half, circulating from east to west, just as we observe in our day-to-day -day lives. The Chinese people were one of the last people to adopt the heliocentric model, mostly forced by colonizers like the French, the English, and the Portuguese. Several ancient beliefs have been extremely important in shaping Chinese culture as well. In fact, each of China's traditional religions have themselves been deeply influenced by these ancient beliefs. Undoubtedly, one of the most basic and widespread of them is the concept of yin and yang. In the symbol of the Taoist religion seen here, the mystical Tao is represented as consisting of two balanced but opposing energies. One is called Yang and the other is called Yin. Yin is the energy associated with femininity, the earth, the night, the moon, and softness. While in contrast, Yang is the energy associated with masculinity, heaven, the daytime, the sun, and strength. Each morning in the parks and public places of China, older people are always seen practicing Tai Chi, an ancient art that seeks to balance yin and yang energies while building strength and agility. And the approach of balancing energy is employed in traditional Chinese medicine as well. The Bible also states that the earth is flat and stationary with a small sun and moon circulating over its face, as we see in this passage in Genesis 1.16. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. I want to thank you everyone for watching this video. May the Lord keep you safe and bless your families in this difficult time that we're living now. Take care. See you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.